Hi, in this tutorial I want to talk about the use of rhythmic and octave displacement in an improvised line. So let's look at the first example that I've played. Um, the chord progression that I've played was a D minor 7, G7, C major 7, which is a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of C major. I've talked about this progression a lot in previous videos and it's the most common chord progression that you'll find in jazz standards. So D minor 7, going to G7, going to C major 7. Over the D minor 7 chord, I simply outlined the chord notes, uh, but I included a couple of what we call diatonic passing notes. Uh, diatonic means that the notes uh, belong to the key that you're in and passing notes are non-chord notes that come in between two chord notes a third apart. So on the first four quavers, I'm outlining the root, the third and the fifth of the D minor seven, and I've got one passing note, E, in between the root and third. On the second four quavers, I'm outlining the third, the fifth, and the seventh of D minor seven, and I've got that one passing note, G, in between the third and the fifth. So that's the first bar. I end up on the seventh of D minor seven, C is the seventh, which leads very nicely to the third of G seven. Now this is something that you'll find an awful lot the, when, you, when you're doing a, a chord progression where the root goes down a fifth to the next chord, it's always good when you finish the first chord on the seventh and lead to the third of the next chord. It's good in, in when you're playing the chords. So if I played D minor seven like that, watch in the middle, the C, the seventh of D minor seven goes down to the third of G7. If we did it at the top, it would be the same. Wherever the, the C is in the chord, it wants to go to B in the G7 chord. On the G7 chord, I played an arpeggio starting on the third, going up not to the ninth, but the flattened ninth. Now, if you look at those four notes on their own, that's actually a B diminished seventh chord. And I've talked about the use of diminished seventh chords on dominant chords in previous videos in this series. I then finished the bar of G7 off with this particular pattern. I'll play it down here. Again, I'm just outli uh, outlining chord notes rather. G7, that's the root the seventh, the fifth. Now I'm aiming to land on the third of C major seven and I do it by putting a little chromatic passing note, D sharp in between D and E. Chromatic means that it, it's borrowed from another key. So the, the note D sharp is not in the key of C and it passes in between the D, the fifth of G seven and E, the third of C major seven. So that pattern is used extensively in jazz and it's one that you really need to know in all keys. So you can do it going from G seven to C. You could do it just on the C chord itself. It does this little circle around the third of C major seven. So now I want to talk about using a technique that we use, which we call rhythmic displacement. In the second example, I played exactly the same notes, but instead of starting on beat one, I started on beat two, and that moved the entire line forward by one beat. Now this had two particular effects. The first one is that in bar two, it delayed going on to the third of G7, the note B, until B2. And in bar three, it delayed going on to the third of C major seven, the note E, until B2. This has a feeling of creating tension, suspension, which is then resolved when you do go on to the third. The second effect that it had was to shift. 
uh, where all the accents fall. So if you notice, when we've got a, a, the melody goes up and then reaches a peak and then starts to come back down again, I tend to accent the top notes each time. So accent the A and the C and the A flat. And by moving everything forward by one beat, that of course moves the accents into different places. So in the first example, in bar one, the accents fall on the upbeat or off beats of beats two and four. One, two, three, four. And in the second example, the first accent doesn't come until the off beat or upbeat of beat three. One, two, three. In the third example, I used the same technique, but I moved everything forward by two beats. So I started the line on beat three. One, two, three, four. And once again, this had the effect of changing where the accents fall and also delaying going on to the third of G7 and C major seven, but this time by two beats. Now, the other technique that I want to talk about is the use of octave displacements. So, in the first example, for instance, instead of going up to the A, we could come down and then play everything else an octave lower. So once again, I've not altered the notes, I've just shifted a section of it down an octave. It's, it's brought everything into the central register. You could do that in a different place, for instance. Instead of carrying on up there, once we've got to B, we could come down to the D. And of course, these two variations could be applied to all three different rhythmic variations. So you can see that without actually altering the notes, there's quite a lot of ways that you can create variety and, and create variations of the same uh, improvised line. You can, of course, change the notes. You could, for instance, a very simple change you could make at the beginning would be just simply to reverse the two first notes, go. That sounds quite good on the D minor seven chord. It's starting on the ninth of the chord. So all these shapes are, are cliches that we all need to know, we, we all use them and we need to know them in all keys. But the, the challenge for us is to tweak them in, in these various ways so that we can create interest and stop the melodic line from becoming predictable and boring. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you.